So ladies and gentlemen, we on the website of black voters matter. And you know, when I see certain black organizations that you didn't know where they came from, but they pop up all of a sudden, you know, like who is these people, where they come from, they call themselves black voters matter. And as I said before, if it was just trying to get black people to uh, be registered to vote and, and participate in the process, fine. But that's not the case with black voters matter. Now we know Ms. Latasha Brown, uh, she's the co-founder of black voters matter and also Clifford Albright is the two founders of black voters matter. Now they're 990 filing that they posted. And like I said, I'm making sure to show it. You can go sit there and go see it yourself on their website. I'm not, it's nothing covert I'm doing because when you are a uh, nonprofit organization, your filings would be public, whether they posted this or not, you still can go find their filings. But the question I always have is with certain people follow the money. There is an economy for the black vote. If you're interested in trying to get black people to vote Democrat, you you'll get some money come your way. And, and, and we're going to look at their 990 filings just to kind of talk about that just a little bit. But I personally just didn't realize how big the economy was. I mean, I knew they were getting a, a bag, but I didn't know how big the bags were. So now I understand why Roland is raging on everybody. I get it now because he's part of that, you know, black voter economy. He gets a bag off of that. You remember when Roland was crying when he saw them people lined up to vote and like everything, like, oh, he crying for uh, Roland was crying because he just saw that bag coming. And do you, if y'all watch Roland's show prior to Biden getting in office, Roland had a regular, you know, studio, but then when Biden got in office, all of a sudden Roland get this, this new studio out of the blue. He, he gets, he get this thing. He bragging, Hey, look at me. Yeah. Because he got the bag for helping deliver up black people to the Democrat party. And what did the Democrat party do for black people with the last vote they gave us last time I checked, they gave it an agent hate crime bill. They didn't do nothing for black people. So black voters matter is out there leading black folks to get registered to vote, to go vote Democrat voting for a party who don't deserve our vote. Now I know that the glue sniffers in the class who's sitting back there right now, sniffing glue. Another thing I'm starting to understand about those people, I'm actually understanding more and more why we have a boule class in the black community. I'm starting to get it. It's because all the glue sniffers, they need the boule. And let me tell you why. They really don't want to think for themselves. They want somebody to tell them what to do. And they are, they are so programmed on performative voting instead of voting for tangible reasons that it is it's like they can't get out of it. They don't know what to say. I mean, it, it is crazy, y'all, the responses they have when you question these organizations. Their response is going to be either you, a, you know, I guess they'll call you a raccoon, which is funny. I mean, I think it's quite funny if anybody would call me a raccoon cause, because I like, okay, well, let's put on the table what, what I have done for black people and what I'm doing for black people now. Because, see, I don't go announce everything I do. That's the difference. And let's see what you do and let's just see what, what, what happens. Cause nine times out of 10, if you're sitting up here tweeting me, um, I would say it was most on Twitter, then you're not really doing much because people that got something going on, not tweeting me. Okay. About anything I'm posting. That's number one. Number two, these people in the boule and, and, and the ones that's tied in with these folks, you know, on the left wing, they tell them that they look, we got to talk to them this way. This is why Roland talks to y'all that way. This is why Roland do what he do. You know, Tiffany Cross, Joy Reed, y'all don't realize how big of an economy it is, you know, for, to get you to vote. And really you're doing performative voting because when you vote, everybody else benefit. But the response, the other response is you must be getting paid by the Republicans. It's like, they never try to prove what you say is wrong. If you notice that they never try to prove what you say is wrong. They don't even really say that you lying. Because if you say you're lying, then you say, okay, show me where I'm lying. They're not going to do that because they're the glue sniffers, y'all. They're sniffing glue. 
they can't show you anything other than talking points they got from, you know, the people that they watch. Can't prove anything. They're talking about people getting paid by the Republicans. I like to see it. Cause as a matter of fact, I keep telling y'all, please write the Republicans and tell them to give me my check. I need it. If, if that's the case, we need that. I got, I got people to pay. I can give my people some bonuses or something. The Republicans are gonna write me a big check. Well, shoot, let, let, let me go ahead and spread this check out to everybody in, in, in my organization as a bonus from the Republicans or something. Cause, cause we sure are not getting it, but let's go to their filing. This is the 2018 filing. Okay. Now you see black voters matter fun. Okay. So let's get down here. It said describe the organization. This is what they told the IRS. Our goal is to increase power in our communities through effective voting. We increase voter registration and help develop voting infrastructure and to pursue policies that expand access to the ballot. What policies have they, have they gotten passed? I have not seen one, but according to what they say in the mission statement to the IRS, they're nonpartisan. Well, let's go ahead on and, and, and drop this receipt. Democrats need vote black voters time to campaign and spend accordingly by Cliff Albright and Latasha Brown opinion contributors. The views expressed by contributors are their own and not the view of the hill. So according to what you told the IRS, you just trying to register people to vote and you know, get the registration, uh, develop infrastructure, pursuing policies. Fine. You didn't mention no political parties, but over here you talking about, you know, the researchers estimate their overall spending by political candidates will hit 9.7 billion by election day in November. Yet grassroots groups in Georgia trying to mobilize voters for the all important turnout are so strapped for cash. They are pooling resources that think on that for a moment, limited financial support for voter organization organizing in Georgia and all places where black engagement in two runoff elections in 2020 was the key to democratic control of the Senate. Political funding habits are hard to break. Donors direct their money to campaigns, parties, and candidates backing the horse they believe uh, should win. But this traditional model of supporting campaigns that often direct millions of dollars into ads isn't any more to put candidates over the finish line or more importantly affect the long-term legislative uh, changes we seek to strengthen in our society. Now they say increasingly diverse America. We are reaching voters uh, say can decide elections um, and moving the needle on critical issues. Why are donors and the democratic establishment anointing a winning strategy and under investing in the grassroots groups, proving their ability to engage voters. Now, listen, they're talking about themselves and then let me, let me show you. So they're doing that rolling thing. Oh, they're not investing in black people, right? Well, the first filing, they had got $1.8 million. Okay. That's 2018, 2019, they're nine ninety. They got $5 million. And in 2020 filing, they say about $10 million given in contributions and grants, grants and similar amounts paid the 10 million, uh, benefits paid two and four members, uh, 3 million professional fundraising fees or 1.3 million. Uh, they said other expenses, $8 million. Total expense of 13 million with, you know, a, um, minus of 2.7 million. So it seems like you guys are getting money. And yet on this article, you saying grassroots, you are not grassroots organization. That's not who you are. Nobody I know in the grassroots got this on the tax return. Nobody, nobody got this on the tax return as grassroots. When you get to that much money, you're corporate at that point. Them folks trust you. And, then, and listen, them folks would never trust gra true grassroots organizations. They would never trust them. So your own 990 filing. Then also you see Latasha Brown and them on, on the MSNBC. MSNBC not going to push the grassroots. When have they ever really pushed grassroots like that? The Breakfast Club, they don't push grassroots like that. Yeah, but y'all all on there, you know, y'all in that, in that boule circle, right? But y'all only supposed to be registering people to vote, right? In 2020, they said it goes to increase power 
in our communities through effective voting. We increase voter registration and help them develop voting infrastructure and pursue policy. The same thing they said, but yet here they talk about the democratic establishment because they acting like Roland. Oh, they're not giving me the more money because they gave the white people more money, but they won't give me money. You understand? So, so all this article from what I've seen so far is promoting themselves, but wrapping it in blackness, kind of like what Roland do. When he talks about advertising, he, he talks about it until he gets his dollars and then he'd be quiet. Right? So he, they say we need engagement. It transcends single election cycles. They say when grassroots organizations are properly supported and have the ear of the community become trusted messengers that can counter misinformation and sway voters for the long term. We don't have the luxury of pinning our hopes for change in one single election, but the Democratic Party is still relying on charismatic candidates to win voters' hearts and on the mind, you know, hearts and minds on their own. It's dangerous to put all our eggs in one basket. As a former President Obama was a charismatic candidate and president who's well loved by many. Um yeah, if if you are an immigrant, if you are LGBT, um, for sure he did a lot for them. Not Black America, uh, not so much. They say, but so was President Trump. Say Democrats need organizations with relationships and communities to register voters. Well, once again, I thought it was only about getting people registered to vote. Why are you mentioning Democrats? I told you, Black Voters Matter is a Democratic organization and it is an operative. I would have no problem with them if they was true to their mission statement here on their 990 to the IRS. They're leading black people to go vote for Democrat. What is the Democrat party doing for our people? And you know what I'm going to start doing because I think that we in any moderators that I have on my channels and I'm going to put the word out. If these people show up talking about Republicans at this point, they're not worthy of engagement anymore. And we need to block those people because those people, if they cannot even have a simple conversation and ask, okay, you're telling us to give our votes to the Democrat party for what? What are they giving us? What did they do with our last vote in 2020 as a collective of people? What did they do with it? I don't want to hear nothing about a Republican because you didn't vote for them. If you voted for Republicans, my message, if you voted 90% for the Republicans, I'll be talking to the Republicans right now more than anything because our votes went 90% that way. We have been voting 80 to 90% for this party for freaking 50 plus years. And we have spiraled down in the toilet. And then a lot of y'all mad. Cause I'm looking, let me call it what it is. Let me call it what it is. I'm going to piss y'all off today. Cause that's just what I do. A lot of you are mad right now that immigrants are passing the black community up. A lot of you right now are upset at watching somebody just cross that board in five years. They surpass you. You've been here 400 plus years and yet they surpassed you. They're using your votes to get things. They play the game very well uh, to get everything they get and they passing you and you're mad about it. And you, and, but yet you still go vote for the party that makes that happen. Number two, you're so invested in trying to get uh, this, this system to do something for us as a collective, instead of us being strategic, focused on economic empowerment, focus on building something in our own community for our own freaking self. Instead of us focusing on that as a collective, no, we don't want to do that. We, we, we so invested in mobilizing ourselves to go vote for a Democrat because you want a white savior. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to build anything. So the boule, they not building nothing either, but they just going to sit at the seat next to the, the, uh, the left wing white supremacist and say, look, I can keep delivering these black people up to you to keep you in power. If you pay me a little bit more, you know, butter biscuits, I'm good. And so they say, okay, we'll pay you. If they, we, we get elected, we'll pay you. And it, and it's, it's a cycle. It's a plantation cycle that many of you want to be on. They're not forcing you to be there. You want to be there. And matter of fact, the people who got wise up and say, wait a minute, I'm sick of this perpetual plantation that we're on. I'm trying to get free of that. Well, I could think for my freaking self, you attack those people. You attack them. 
because they don't want to be on a plantation with you. Those same people would be the ones if, if somebody was on the little plantation and during slavery would be the ones that's trying to dime them out to massa because they're trying to escape. It'd be them same ones. There's a group of black people right now. That's not happy with the status quo. And y'all have to understand a lot of black people like being oppressed. No matter what they say, they complain all day, but when they, when the rubber meets the road, they, they, they don't know nothing but oppression and they cool with it. They care. They care nothing about obtaining power or anything. They don't want no power. But then what happens is these immigrant groups come in here and they're seeking a slice of the pie. They're seeking some sort of power. And then when they get over you, you want to get pissed off. How you letting immigrants come in this country and get over you? Because you stop polit you stop actually focused to build a community. You stop seeking power. You want acceptance. You still want acceptance from, from the, the, the white supremacist. You want acceptance. You don't want nothing for yourself. You defend the Democrat party more than your own children. If we defended the black community, like a lot of you defend Democrat, we'd be all right. But let's go back to the 2018 filing real quick. So you scroll down here. Let's get down here. Now they just made, you know, at the time they were paid 19,000. No problem. Right. 13,000 for, for Clifford Albright act blue civics right here. Gave him $5,000 Democrat organization. Kind of see kind of some of the people churches giving them money. Um, just kind of some more people that is giving them money here. Just so you can see look, all the money is coming in in WACP. Now you are giving all this money to this organization. Well, what are you doing in your actual communities? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying give it $10,000 Mississippi boats. You know, one, one of the Jackson, Mississippi, one of the, uh, you know, poorest states in the union, but you've given $30,000 to this organization. Okay, fine. And you look here, you know, let's get down to, uh, what they made for the filing. They, they said 75,000 and 90,000. Okay. That, that was the next filing. So then we get down again. Um, let's go back up here. Uh, Kaiser Permente foundation. Um, that is a organization. Um, that's definitely a white organization. You said leave a conservation voters, you know, as you just kind of see the numbers kind of going up, uh, up and up and up here. So Reed Hastings, he gave a million dollars. Well, who, who is Reed Hastings here? Reed Hastings is the CEO of Netflix. Okay. His net worth is 3.2 billion. He's a billionaire. And yet he gave them a, he gave them a million dollars. Now, do you think billionaires like Reed Hastings is really invested into now what we do in the black community or keeping us on the Democrat plantation as a people, a whole million dollars. Okay. Tied to advocacy. They was, they was behind some of the money with black lives matter. If you, and then when I did the video on the ties organization, they, they had made sure to fund all that money to LGBT groups. So I thought that was interesting to have the ties advocacy here. Um, so we do, I'm just kind of scrolling down. Let me get to 2020. Um, of course we see more money there. Um, now the 2020 is filing. Um, let me get down here. The salary went up. Clifford got 113,000. And Latasha got, um, 104,000. Let's go to scroll down some more. We just doing our thing here. Okay. And we just kind of seeing some people that's, that's in here, you know, the ACLU, um, just, you know, if you want to look at some of this, you can go to their website and see some of this, but I'm just letting you know that this is not a grassroots organization, but they sit up here and try to portray themselves. Uh, like a grassroots organization. So they talking about Karen Bass right here's a big race for Los Angeles mayor and why her opponent, a millionaire can now spend her on ads and like a uh, bass, a community activist with deep local roots has the power of the people behind her, which gives her a real edge. 
you know, talking about, you know, voter strategy. They say black votes are central in winning, securing the White House and Congress for the Democrat Party in 2020. And what did they get out of it? They got nothing. Actually, they got betrayed by the Democrat Party because they propagandized black Americans. Do you remember that? Every night CNN and, and, and the Democrat Party was propagandizing black people, talking about we are attacking Asians. And all of a sudden they got that hate crime bill signed and all of a sudden black people stopped attacking Asians. I thought it was like a, like a something that was happening all the freaking time and it just went away. That's interesting. That is like freaking interesting that all that went away. So this, this whole article is basically about for them to be getting more money, just doing a rolling thing, right? I ain't gonna go through all that. But the fact is they're not, they're a partisan. They're not just nonpartisan. They focus on Democrats need black voters, but let's go to this other question. Why so much investment into the black community with voting? If we're truly 13 to 14% of the population, why are you spending all this money to get black people to vote? Folks, I think, I think black people have been finessed and been finessed for a long time about how many of us are really in this country because why isn't they don't, they don't have an organization called Asian voters matter. Where's that organization? Or why we don't have an organization called Latino voters matter. And they donating money to get Latinos to vote. Or, you know, East Indians, you know, why don't we, why don't we see organizations to get them to vote? Why only black people? Why are you only targeting black people? Cause according to Stacey Abrams, that's why they can't pay attention to us because we, it's not enough of us. Right. But yet you give this organization millions of dollars a year to try to get black people in and, and they, they strategies is, is, is interesting. They try to make it like some movement or something to get what, what are we getting out the deal? What are we getting? Cause every time we vote for somebody, everybody else's benefit, immigrants benefit and Afghanistan benefit, Ukraine benefit, but the black community is still freaking suffering. The majority of the homeless people in LA right now on freaking skid rows, black people. You can take that $10 million and go help black people in LA. I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to ask some questions here. The $5 million, you couldn't help black people with that $5 million. So you'll spend $5 million to, to try to get black people to go vote for Democrats. That, that, that's, that's, that's what we're doing here. We're not getting nothing out the deal folks. I'm sorry. I don't want, I don't want to be a person that's just watching everybody else eat. And I can't, I'm not going to be that guy. Now, if you, if that's your lot in life and you just want to perform and vote, do that, knock yourself out. I'm good with it. But for the people who don't want to perform and vote, the people say, no, you're going to give me something for my vote. Those people, you got to take a stand because I promise you, I will not, I will not allow the collective of you to harm me like that. I'm going to make sure I'm good. I'm not going to sit up here and be a perpet like on a personal level. I'm not going to be a permanent underclass on a personal level. Some of you are cool with being a permanent underclass. You're fine with it. You, you, you vote for permanent underclass status, but then go complain on, on other groups that come in here. Stop complaining on at this point. I don't want to hear a lot of you complaining about immigrants at this point because you vote to empower them. Why wouldn't they get over you at that point? You helping them, you pushing them up, you giving them the alley-oop. Why wouldn't they get past you? You keeping the politicians in power that that's pushing those people above you. you. In my opinion, if you keep voting for that, then you get what you deserve personally. You get it. You're the only group of people in America that got this weird emotional attachment to the, to the political system with the voting. No other group has this, this weird political attachment emotional. I mean, it's like so emotional for you. You got more emotions to for this Democrat party than you have for your own community. Where's your emotion for the 80 plus children being born in single parent households? Where's that emotion? Where's that emotion for right now? As I speak, some, some black young man going to jail, some black young man and got killed. Where is the emotion and attachment for that? 
where's the emotional attachment of seeing us not having the things that we need, not having our grocery stores that we need, not having the schools that we need, not owning, you know, the, the, the gas stations that we pump in gas in our neighborhood, not owning the dry cleaners like we should own, not owning all the restaurants in our communities. Where's the emotion and passion for that? But see, the problem is with that is that's going to take some, some effort. It's going to take some unification. And a lot of these people, ladies and gentlemen, they don't want to, they don't want to roll their sleeves up and get to work. The reason why they vote so much and they, and they so invested into it is because they look for the white man to do everything for them. See, they're so used to the white man doing for them that they know nothing else. And anybody that talks outside of the white man doing something for, for them, Oh, you crazy. Something wrong with you. Entrepreneurship is so foreign. Somebody preaching entrepreneurship, economic empowerment for black people. Hey, you, you're a raccoon, right? You're a raccoon. They don't understand that they should be an independent person, independent thinker. They need to vote for people who are going to give them policies or even something that's going to benefit even your economic empowerment. See, they would rather vote for a Democrat party that that promise them a payroll check, a a payroll tax holiday. Let's say they promise you that, but they won't vote for the guy that say, you know what? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some, some major tax breaks because when you're trying to build things economically with economic empowerment, you want the tax breaks. So you can save money, but that's not how they think. They celebrate Latasha Brown and black voters matter. And I have nothing against that sister at all. I don't know that sister. I don't know that brother. I'm not speaking ill of them personally, but they need to stop trying to act like on the IRS filings that they're not political in that sense, just getting people registered to vote. But then you write in articles, begging the Democrat party to give you more money than what you're already getting. You getting money. Well, what more do you want? It's not enough. You know, I guess you've been hanging around rolling. Well, rolling is their buddy. Cause he, they, they pass him some of that money too. I've seen, I'm in the first time I've seen the black voters matter thing on his page and say, Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Roll, rolling, getting some of that money. You know, it's all, a, it's all a bag y'all. It's all a bag to get y'all to vote for Democrat. And the reason why they hate us so much, the reason why Roland is raging, the reason why Tiffany Cross is raging, everybody's raging, is because if we are successful uh, of just really giving you the truth and getting you to think a little bit more than what you're doing, demanding something from the Democrat Party, saying that, you know what, either I'm going to withhold my vote or I'm going to vote for the other side, that, that either way, uh, is not a vote for the Democrat party. And that's a problem for those who get in the bag from the Democrat party. Just that simple. Now, those of you who agree with me and say, I'm not going to be sitting up there looking stupid. We have to sit up here and, and really just take, you know, take the lead on this thing because the majority of community is not going to do that. The majority of community, unfortunately is looking for a white savior in a form of a Democrat. They want the Democrats to do everything for them. They don't want to lift a finger. But once again, they'll be the same people getting mad at immigrants coming in here and passing them. Because one thing that immigrants, you know, are doing, they play in the game very well. And they have a mission. To, they have a mission for education, have a mission to open businesses. And, and they're going to, and they're going to continue to keep passing you. I see it. I have to call it out for what it is. It's just, just that simple. America is a capitalistic society. It's dog eat dog. That's what America is. Either you're going to get out and, and fight and be in the mud with things, or you're going to sit down and, and be on the wayside. There's going to be more and more black people be homeless in America too. You sitting there waiting for the white man to come save you. You sadly mistaken because he can't save himself. What I'm saying is to people is this, 
Get your act together. Get your act together. Start focusing more on economic empowering and building. You know our agents, they ain't beating down the door running the vote like y'all. We had the agents do so much better than black America. Why? It's because they focus on economic empowerment. Like Dr. Claude Anderson told us to do. They focus on economic empowerment and then through economics, you can control politicians. They're not sitting up here talking about some voting rights. They tell me, look, man, I need you to do this for me. I got this bag. Nobody sympathizes with us, our pain, our struggle. Nobody cares. We got to care. But the worst thing that we are doing as a collective of people is still begging the Democrats to do something. You don't even, I can't even say you begging them to do something for you. Let me stop. You're not even doing that. You're just performing the voting at this point and get mad if, if somebody questions why are we performing the voting. It's a sad state of affairs, but it has to be called out folks. It has to be called out. Now, right now they worried in Georgia, even Chuck Schumer is told by, you know, hot Mike, they worried about Georgia and they should be. I know Stacey Abrams not going to win. So I don't even be mentioning that, but like I said, I hope Herschel Walker. Oh, I hope he wins. Like I said, it's going to be, I'm a laugh because the Democrats are that bad. They're that bad at this point. They are, they have a, they do not have no agenda for us. And also the fear mongering. They, they, this, I mean, it's sad. They try to fear monger you to vote for, for the Democrat. The Republicans going to put you on a plantation. Well, you don't know how bad it's going to be. Let me ask y'all a question. And just leave in the comment section. When Trump was in office, did you have like a thousand MAGA people show up at your front door the whole time that you was in office, he was in office. Did they show up at your door? Did they go try to kick your door in and drag you out the house? Did they do that? I mean, because all this fear mongering, Ooh, these Republicans, they're going to put you in slavery. Oh, they're going to have you in Jim Crow. You, Ooh, they're going to roll back everything that we ever fought for. Oh boy. They're going to get you like seriously. And the sad part about it, a lot of these silly people in our community fall for that. Oh my Lord, the Republicans going to get me. They going to get me Lord. Oh, let me go down there. This Jesus Christ. Why are you so scary? You're so scary. Other groups that don't even focus on that, on that freaking voting. Like y'all don't even focus on it and they get way more than y'all. But black voters matter is not, um, just a voter registration group. Like they claim they are, they are Democrat operatives trying to lead black people to vote for Democrat so they can get a bag and that's it. That's all. So just want to just pass that information, um, on. So, you know, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us on the podcast. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you click the, uh, subscribe button, you know, and post another podcast, uh, click the like button is very important. And, uh, thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next one.